Good afternoon guys. Today we're going to start a YouTube series on C++. We're going to look at the basics of C++ and make a program that's going to have some simple functionality. Let's get after it. So what's C++? C++ is a computer language heavily used in the industry to make programs, to make things work and to, for things to work together. Uh, if you're writing in C++, you're going to need a compiler. A compiler is a program on a computer that allows you to make programs. If you're on a PC, I would recommend Microsoft Visual Studios. If you're on a Mac, I would recommend Xcode. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the format of a program, like how it'll typically look like. Uh, it'll start off with a pound sign, include, less than, IO stream, greater than, and you hit enter. What this does is this tells our um, our program that we're going to be using um, some terms, and IO stream is going to make it a lot easier to make this program. We're also going to use name uh, using namespace std semicolon. Now it's very important to add semicolons to most of your code because it's what executes it. There are some exceptions where you don't have to use the semicolon. Uh, the next thing we're going to use is int space main uh, open close parentheses and this is one of the situations where you don't have to use a semicolon but you do have to use a curly brace this starts uh, the function and then it automatically adds a curly brace at the end of it um, what's in these two curly braces is going to be our, our program uh, when the program is finished it's going to, we're going to put return zero uh, semicolon and what this will do is this will uh, basically end the program but to keep it from shutting off and not letting us see what the end result is we're going to also write in this other code here it's cin dot get open close parentheses semicolon and this my friends is the basics on how a program will look okay so the next thing we're going to go over is data types so data types are basically the type of data that you would have in your program. Uh, for example, uh, INT uh, basically reserves some memory on a computer and you can basically make an INT and then you type in a word after this and it makes a data type. So we'll say apples, semicolon. So this basically says that apples is going to be like a variable or a keyword that we're going to use in our program. And INT basically says to the computer that we're reserving some memory for this word apple. So whenever we use it later on, it'll actually have memory in your program. But there's different ones besides INT. INT has some limitations, like you can't really use it with numbers that have decimal points. Uh, for numbers with decimal points, you can do float. Uh, which uh, has a limited amount of, uh, of numbers beyond the decimal point. I like to use double. Double is one of the larger data types that you can use in, uh, and basically it can go pretty far behind the decimal point. So to give you the most accuracy, I, I use double. Now that we've talked about how to um, declare variables, let's go ahead and declare some that we're gonna use in our simple program. So we got apples, and I'm also gonna put double oranges double cherries, double watermelon. And basically what we're going to, the program we're going to make is it's going to, we're going to sell apples, oranges, cherries, and watermelons. But what else is involved with a program where you sell stuff? How about the customer's wallet? Like how much money they have to spend? We're going to uh, say double and we're going to call it wallet. Now one thing that's pretty interesting is I can say that the wallet equals 100. So this tells our program that we have a wallet and that it is 100. Um, and then one thing we're also going to do is um, we're going to give the uh, user, whoever's going to be using this program, uh, an option to input information. So with uh, with inputting information, that is also a variable. Now I want to say float for this one float user choice so to recap we have our header which is include iostream which basically allows us to use a certain format that makes coding a lot easier 
using namespace std will come in handy later when we start using input and outputs it makes it a lot easier to code whenever using namespace std we have our variables so we have apples, oranges, cherries, watermelons, wallet equals 100, and user choice. Now down here under uh, int main, so int, like I said, reserves memory for our, uh, for our main function. This is like our main program. So under main, how is our program going to start? Well, we're going to use a while loop. What a while loop is, is while a certain condition is going on, execute a program. So we're going to say while, and we're going to put parentheses, uh, while wallet is greater than or equal to zero. And then we're going to use a curly brace under it. And then it automatically puts another curly brace underneath it. While our wallet is greater or equal to zero, it's going to perform a function. What kind of function are we going to do? Well, we're going to start off by displaying information. How do we display information? It's pretty particular. We have to say C out and then less than, less than. Um, C out basically says we're going to display information. The less than, less than is an operator kind of guided, guiding what's going to be displayed. Whenever you use it, quotations and what you write in a quotations will show you know your message um, there's this trick that I like to use it's uh, uh, forward slash in forward slash in and what it is is um, it basically means new line so in our while loop whenever it loops um, to keep our information from touching um, you can say new line new line and it kind of spaces it out so we're gonna say new line new line and then welcome to TJ's <laughs> exclamation point exclamation point let's do some new lines and then quotation and then semicolon now this is going to get a little tedious um, so we're also going to say see out less than less than menu menu colon slash in slash in close quotations semicolon uh, now this is going to be our menu. Now how our menu is going to be displayed is going to be like one for apples, two for oranges, three for cherries, and four for watermelons. Um, so I'm going to uh, kind of write this out. Quotations one. Apples. Two dollars. And and just to keep it simple there are ways of uh, displaying this information without having to do spaces there's this thing called uh, set w and it basically allows you to set spaces so you don't have to be like space 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 oranges space 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 three dollars semicolon okay now the next thing we're going to display is we're going to have something saying like you have so many apples you have so many oranges to do that we're going to say C out less than less than quotations you have slash end for new line close quotations now this is cool what you can do with operators you can kind of put them in mid sentence so you can say you have uh, operator and then since we declared up here that apples is a, is a key word we can say apples now it won't say apples it'll display the number of apples that we have so with another operator and then quotations space apples uh, new line uh, close quotations operator and we will just do this for all of them Okay, so now that we have that done, uh, we're also going to say what the balance is. So we're going to say C out. 
here. Your available balance, or your available credit, I should say. Your available credit is, now you can put a dollar sign here, and then close quotations, and then put an operator here, wallet, saying that's the number, basically it's gonna be 100, operator, quotations, period, slash in, slash n, quotation, semicolon. So it's gonna say, uh, your available credit is, and it's gonna it's gonna start off with 100, because we are saying up here that the wallet equals 100, and with this dollar sign here, it's gonna look like it says available credit is $100. Uh, now the next thing we're gonna write is C out, operator, quotations, type in the number that represents the fruit you want, or type five to check out. And this is like our statement to our users, telling them what to do. So if we're telling our user to do something, how are we gonna say input? So instead of saying C out for the next part, we're gonna say C I N for C N operator and then uh oh see that the operator for cin is actually opposite than c out so instead of less than less than it's greater than greater than and uh up here we've declared user choice as something that can hold information so we're going to say cn user choice now basically this is our input and this is saying that whatever the user inputs is going to be the user choice pretty cool so as a recap um we have our number that represents which items we're going to sell. We have apple, oranges, cherries, and watermelons, uh, the prices. Uh, we have the string of code. It's like you have so many apples, you have so many oranges, you have so many cherries, you have so many watermelons. Your available credit is dollar sign wallet, which is saying that it's going to be a hundred dollars. Type in the number that represents the fruit you want to uh, you want, or type five to check out. Then we have our user choice. So now that we have all that put together, now for our if statements. To make an if statement, you start it off with if, then parentheses, user choice. So this saying if the user inputs um, one. And how we did that is we say user choice equals, now in if statements you have to say equals equals. That's one of the rules that they have in it. So if user choice equals equals one, parentheses, uh, no semicolon but curly brace. Uh, if the user puts one, we're gonna take our wallet, so wallet equals wallet minus two because we're gonna subtract two dollars from it, semicolon. Now, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, tally how many apples uh, we're going to buy. So, um, how we take our keyword apples here and add a tally to it is we say apples plus plus semicolon. What this will do is this will take apples and add one to it. So, now that we have this if statement, we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it a few times so we can use it for the, uh, for the oranges, the cherries, and the watermelons. Uh, so we're going to just paste this a few times, kind of space it out some. Now we're just got to uh, edit uh, some of the uh, some of the information here. So instead of user choice equals equals ones, we're going to change it to equals equals two. And instead of calling it oranges, I mean apples, we're going to call it oranges. Uh, but except for oranges cost three dollars and not two. If user choice is three. Uh, instead of apples, it's going to be cherries, and they cost four dollars. And then, uh, if user choice is four, uh, we're going to change this to watermelons, and watermelons are expensive; they're five. And you know what? I forgot to add one more, and I'll tell you why. So what happens uh, whenever they press five? Now we we wrote up here, uh, type the number that represents the fruit you want, or type five to check out. So how do we say check out? Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to erase the apples in the wallets, and we're going to say uh, see out. And 
then quotations. Let's do some new lines too. New line, new line. Thank you for shopping. New line, new line. Close quotation, semi. And then uh, we're going to say uh, return, or let's say sin dot get parentheses semicolon and then return zero and what this will do is this will actually terminate our program so now we got our program all ready to go um, so what does it look like once you built a program and run it well on Xcode uh, basically it has a play button right here uh, and what it'll do is it'll um, um, play the uh, or run or compile the program so we're gonna run it and then it says bill succeeded and we're gonna bring up what our program looks like it says welcome to TJ's our menu is one for apples two for oranges three for cherries or four for watermelons and it says you have zero apples zero oranges zero cherries zero watermelons uh, your available credit is a hundred type in the number that represents the fruit or type five to check out so let's say I want an apple it says you have one apples your available credit is ninety eight dollars because it took off two dollars because it cost two dollars type in the number that of the fruit you want or take uh, or type five to check out so let's type in each number just to make sure that uh, it's tallying it three four okay so we have one of each our available credit is eighty six dollars uh, now let's just kind of do some random stuff so it says that uh, we have fifty four dollars and these are amount that we have but let's try typing in five let's see what happens when we type in five it says thank you for shopping program ended with execute zero so we typed in five it ended the program and it says thank you for shopping we checked out and that is our program. Um, if you did this from home and if this is your first program, congratulations. You have built your own shopping list uh, with the receipt and available credit. And this is the basics of it. I'm going to keep uh, making these tutorials and each one will get more and more advanced. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I'll, I'll see you next time. Enjoy.